Hello, everybody. This is part one of a New Year's somatic poetry ritual for the Poetry Project. The physical building of St. Mark's Church in the Bowery is situated on an angle facing the intersection of 10th Street and 2nd Avenue in Manhattan. Stuyvesant Street comes in at another angle from 3rd Avenue from what was once St. Mark's Bookshop, but is now a coffee beanery. Two blocks down is a building where Jimi Hendrix used to live in a basement apartment that for a time afterwards housed the Asian American Writers Workshop. That basement space is now a gap. What vanishes from the landscape of our lives? What remains in spite of everything? Sacred geometries have long served to focus spiritual attention in many spiritual traditions in cultures across the globe. Look at the map here. You can find it on Google Maps or any other place. Draw the diagram of 10th Street, 2nd Avenue, and Stuyvesant Street on paper, on your palm, on a screen, on a canvas, or any other surface, permanent or temporal. Use ink, spit, water, gin, or other liquid or bodily fluid. Mark the church on the diagram. Contemplate the diagram wherever you have drawn it. Meditate on what is gone, what remains, and what is left to be found. Breathe. Write. Happy New Year. <laughs> this is C.A. Conrad. I'm very happy to be here. So this is a portion of the ritual we're all working on together, nine of us. Find the poetry of nine different poets you want to work with on the publication page. For nine days, work with one poet at a time. Write their name on eight strips of paper, then place one in each sock, one in your underwear over your genitals, one over your navel. Place one over your heart, another over your throat, your forehead, and one on top of your head. I like to have a hat on top of it. You now have the poet's name touching your body in eight different locations. For the ninth location, write their name on a slice of toast with jelly or some other delicious spread. Then stand up and yell the poet's name, eating their name in between so it enters your body and stomach. Eat the name of the poet. Now read the poem out loud. Then open your notebook and write as fast as you can. Happy New Year. This is part three of the New Year's somatic poetry ritual. All things living decompose eventually into mineral and nothing proceeds without it. This is a ritual for soil. Soil is fragile, possible, mysterious, and alive. Collect soil into a jar from a place of importance or curiosity. Study and note as deeply or in whatever direction compels you some histories in the place of this material, what happened here and what presences human or otherwise have touched this earth and its substrata. Make of soil a temporary site of devotion, which may include fire, stone, food, names of particular dead, objects of fear, intention, 
outrage, wish, personal treasure. Meditate at your altar. Recall, meditation can be anything and nothing. Sleep with jar of soil open near your sleeping place. Let dream and soil kiss however they do in your sleeping. Collect your dream notes or your morning notes. Bring and leave the soil somewhere you've never been. I'm Patricia Spears Jones, and here is my ritual for the new year. On the first day of this momentous year, consider the daily, consider sanctuary, consider 21. Each day, I take a picture of either the interior of my apartment or the street or outside in the neighborhood and post on Instagram and say good morning. It has become a ritual for me. It is how I show gratitude for sanctuary. It is my place of refuge. So in this new year, here's a variation on that practice. On New Year's Day, cast your eye on your personal space and then think also of St. Mark's most public space, portals, the floor, the risers, the nave. Remember, St. Mark's Church is consecrated. It is a sanctuary. Draw a picture from your memory of space. Take a picture with your iPhone or Android of your domicile, your personal place of refuge. On New Year's Day, collage your drawing and your photograph. Then write a poem. During the first week of the new year, Take a morning picture of your domicile or your neighborhood. Write a poem each day, ripping off the images that surround, that comfort you. At week's end, review daily details of your sanctuary. Revisit your New Year's Day poem. On the seventh day, with words from these texts, write a new 21-line poem. Welcome the new year. New Year's Day is often a time to reflect, set intentions for the coming year, and be in community. This part of our ritual invites you to explore community through sound and noise. In The Nature of Listening, Pauline Oliveros writes, I remind myself to listen so that I may be here now, even though now has already gone. Following multiple seasons of social distancing and Zoom life, explore what you can train your ear to listen for. Play with the practice of deep listening. Day one, browse the Poetry Project's website recordings. Listen randomly to the first 10 to 20 seconds of any recordings or events that catch your attention. If you choose to work with a video, make sure that you just listen to it. Create a list of three different recordings you'd like to work with. Write down the name of the event or readers, the date, and the relevant link. Make a few notes. What do you want to remember about why you chose the files you chose? Day two, pick the most recent recording from your list. Whether it's a 60 minute reading or a five minute poem, listen to the text once with your eyes closed, hands relaxed at your sides. Listen a second time. Take notes the entire time the poets are reading. What language creeps from ear to brain to pen? Write without stopping, focusing your attention on what is being read, not on what you are writing. Take a break. Return to your recording several hours later. Listen a third time 
writing without stopping, but this time listen for the sounds that are not part of the poem. Listen for whispering, footsteps, chairs creaking. Listen for the conversations we can't hear, for the small talk and the socializing. Keep writing. After this third listening, put the notes from the day aside. Listen to the recording a fourth time, eyes closed. When the recording ends, set a timer for five minutes and write without stopping, taking stock of your listening of the day. Days three and four. Repeat the four round listening process described in day two, allowing the two remaining recordings one day each, tending to the oldest recording last. Day five. Read through the three days of notes you have with colored pencils or highlighter markers at the ready. Color code your notes. What you choose to code for is up to you. You might draw, create a sonic pattern, or highlight nouns and verbs that get repeated. Transcribe what you've highlighted or marked onto a fresh page. Be generous with your spacing between words, lines, Allow language room to breathe. These pages should be returned to as raw material to turn into poems. Hi, I'm Paula Go, and I'm reading part six of a New Year somatic poetry ritual for the Poetry Project. And these are instructions that you can use to enact something for yourself and I encourage you to do it. So listen closely, here we go. Find one of Diane de Prima's revolutionary letters. It's easy to do, I, I can help you if you need help. Um, she wrote 63 of them and here's the 46th. Revolutionary letter number 46. And as you learn the magic, learn to believe it, don't be surprised when it works. You undercut your own power. All right, transcribe the letter, whichever one you pick, and put it with a freshly cut lock of your own hair in an envelope addressed to you. Put a US postage stamp on it, drop it in the mail, and, and when you get it back, open the letter and read it like it was sent to you, straight from Diane de Prima, from beyond, or say, from like the East Village, where she was arrested on obscenity charges in 1961 for publishing a newsletter with Amiri Baraka called The Floating Bear, just a few blocks away from the Poetry Project. Um, smell, the, smell the envelope. Like, smell your old, old self. Then, then throw that lock of hair out the window. Any window, preferably a high window. Think about your old self floating into the past. Think about what your fur would be like if you were a floating bear. Who would you let ride you? Where would you fly to orchestrate the revolution? Write a new letter back. Um, for those of you following along, you can stop anytime you want or repeat this process, dropping the letter and a new lock of hair in the mail to yourself a second time, a third time, a 63rd time or an infinity of times, though that's not a thing since death draws a line where the future isn't stopped, just one infinity. I I wrote this letter and um and as you learn the magic she knows you first tells you to meet to gather with lifelike things like light, resembling people you love maybe too easily. Call her the magic if you want, like you want to, if it means you will wield what she gives you yourself to do practice a magic, the magic gave you to show the human trap we made has a trap door I know how to open the hole we fell through. Who's got a light and who's got a ladder? 
Kiss me as soon as you can. All right, Happy New Year, everyone. I love you. Hi everyone, Happy New Year, and thanks to C.A. Conrad for inviting me to participate in this somatic poetry ritual. Thanks to Kyle for the idea to video record them, and also to Amanda, Jason, Cosm, Erica, Patricia, and Paul for your rituals as well. This is part seven. The new year is a good time to call the people you love. Choose a single poem by each of nine poets you admire but do not know personally. Look on the contacts list on your phone and for each poet you chose, find the person whose name is closest in order, alphabetical or otherwise, to the name of that poet. Call that person and read to them the poem by the poet whose name is close to theirs. After you read the poem aloud, invite them to write a poem. If they would like, you can read the poem again, perhaps with varying speeds, while they write. Happy New Year. My name is Amanda Paradise, and this is my ritual exercise. Ask out loud, I wonder who is reading at the Poetry Project tonight? Then go into the kitchen, take a clean plate out of a cupboard, and wash it, and rinse it, dry it, and then put it back, snug with his friends, also known as other dishes. Then go into the another room and write. Ask out loud, I wonder who on earth is reading at the Poetry Project tonight. Then go into the bathroom, take off all of your clothing, Get into the shower, but do not turn on the shower. Stand there staring at your dry soap, shampoo, your rag. Look at your rag that wipes away your rage and sadness. Do not take long, just a couple of minutes of a dry shower visiting your body scrubbing implements. Then go into another room and write, write, write. Ask, hey, just exactly who is reading at the Poetry Project tonight? Take a clean sheet, fold it out of your closet, wear it as a cape, then a queen's turban. Then, as wings, they are wings as you run around screaming, Whoever you are, I want to hear your poems at the Poetry Project tonight. The Poetry Project. The Poetry Project tonight has poems and poets reading the poems. Who are these poets? Who are these poets? Then calm down and write. And this is part nine of the New Year's somatic poetry ritual, and I'm actually reading this for Jason P. Smith, who composed it. This ritual is for mothers, Jason's own, and any other who facilitates a world. Select a poem by any writer, living or dead, within the last century, 1920 to 2020. Begin the day standing near any window illuminated by the sun. Complete the following breath exercise. Inhale, four counts, hold, four counts, exhale, four counts, as many times as you feel necessary. Read the poem aloud seven times. Repeat the first stanza continually as you sweep each doorway in your home. At sunset, Leave your home with a notebook and pen and walk east on a block of your choosing. Find a tree you'd like to befriend. Complete the same breath exercise from this morning for your tree. Attempt to recite the poem from memory 
to the tree. Right before you cross the threshold into your home, sit and write for as long as you can. As you write, think of this phrase, because of prisons today I could. Repeat this daily until you've memorized the poem or otherwise transformed.
The entrance opens only for those willing to travel without papers or knowledge of a future. We bang so hard at the blue ceiling and the smell of hail just to know the blue that is not blue. Help me push through the useless, useless clouds, their dark bellies, their fumigated hats so pretty and so pernicious to the dying bees. It's my mother's birthday, so let us pass. Please come with me. Let's jump together, shall we? Two sunflowers a thousand years beneath my feet as I walk toward the spur and see a backpack a flattened bottle of shampoo, a rolling bag at the intersection, tense in the sliver of dirt between the underpass and the on-ramp. No person anywhere near. Out the window, a hollow sign waits for the old Studebaker in the broken driveway. Berms lead down to the street where we throw out the dolls or maybe barter for a companion on the newly paved road, heading home, rusty and dark red. A bulb left on in the night over paths scattered with precious formulas of gravel and hot tar made from this much beach, this much number 10, a pinch of number 5, and number 67. Three warm breaths make our transport complete. Then there's the penis. 
the warehouse farm where the penis grows inside the penis room, next to the hands blooming in the hand room, hearts budding in the heart room, ears flowering in the ear room, where the whole baby room stands adjacent to the brain room at the end of the hall. It's now so simple to create a brain, the most primitive machine of all. In a rare occurrence just last week, an intact human was found hiding in an oil barrel on the banks of the Cuyahoga, half buried in neon green muck, captured only after an honest bounty was paid. Please, the human said, please. Their face strangely congruent under the searchlights and ant-like drones, shining past jeep tracks in the sand, past concrete walls painted green with cheery dogs. These nights, I've left the door open to the vision coming through the dark. His arms filter through the flowered ceiling, unsealed from the jewel tree in the window. His organ hurtles through the air into the pond, where I search for a mirror and some softer chalk, a surface so pliable, so dug and raw that the baby's breathy touch, the wind, some creosote so faint, begs the otter to swim on this, my first and last day. But it's early morning in someone else's house. Out the window, a New England dawn, mist on the green and turquoise bed, the pound of feet upstairs, then a rush of cold air, a walk down the stairs, a winter relationship, or a pact of privacy before the lights come on. What's left is the result of criminals. The orange, a rendering, some thready hope that the white man lost, but he did not lose. Could it not be night again? A boy, his beard, his hat the only orange intact inside our bed, our hold heading down as if it were a normal day. When our viewing habits were not caught public on the street, how did they know? Did I somehow tip them off? First, they took my sweater, then the card with his name. When stumbling, they marched us down the long hall building to a cell, the blood fountain, where soon I even lost the ocean smell of wind in the after rot rushing from the open doors of trains. Thanks, everyone. Happy New Year. California. We often ate late by flameless candles and took turns choosing how best to be disposed of. I want to be buried. I want everyone to be buried. I realize there's scarcely a spare acre left in the ground, but I just can't do without that indecorous transit from parlor to plot. I need the array of daytime headlights jolting the arid access road, the only remembrance that matters. Don't make a speech. For years I would wonder whether the man who attacked me, in his memory did the event of it persist as a dull sort of flash. And then he died and became himself, just a flash in the mind of the world. And now I wonder, is he anywhere? I don't believe in hell, and also I don't believe in nothing, so that leaves only heaven. I have a couple questions. It is my understanding that the weather in heaven has only a single setting which is pleasant. I haven't spent real time in California, but friends of mine who've moved there say it's difficult, absent the changing of the seasons, to remember when things took place. With reference to always the lodgepole pine and the low vent needle grass, you get confused. Dates, sequences, even the people involved. You can almost imagine the whole thing with somebody else. A space to train and exit. Maybe California is just plain easier with the commonness of outbuildings. 
raw looking cedar or sheet metal walls and a runnel of sun getting in through the roof seam. Position the heavy bag, tighten the eye bolt, 25 right hooks. Or pull up a chair and compose your suicide note, a space to train and exit. The purpose of having a body at all is to practice to practice the keeping alive of domestic animals and plants. You dispense to yourself some minerals and some water. You expose yourself to the sun and it helps you remember to do the same for those in your charge. If you could equip them with all they require, or else make it so they require nothing, you wouldn't need your body at all. The suggested face for sorry. You and me. We are the opposite of twins in an old story. When I am in pain, you don't feel it. If I up and wretch, you never guess. The city laid out poison along the tunnels and tracks meant for rats, and one day my dog ate some. She was fine. I've never been so jealous in my life. I want to do the things we do to die. And then just take off sprinting in the steep ravine in my dream. I walk my dog, and you cross our path, and she torques at you and rears and snaps. She senses you are wholly bad. They say animals can tell. It's like with earthquakes. You're supposed to scan the classifieds, searching for a sudden spike in the number of missing pets, and that's how you know to prepare. Maneuver away from shelving. Crawl to the nearest door frame. Get out of California. What are you waiting for? shelter. Archive is the disembodied voice of a palpable consciousness. Archive is a jumbled dream. Archive needs poetry you must never forget. Archive is in scripture. Archive is inspiration. Archive tells many stories. I am archive and a mere inscripted postcard is archived. Cuando regresamos a tu habla e iniciamos nuestro propio país, toma esto como directriz. Memoria de un animal es tuyo también. Archivo todos los pulgares oponibles de que tenemos registro. Y muchas identidades, sabiduría. Archives murmur, circulates around. Archive lets originals breathe. You can't tamper with archive. It's a strange cosmology. Archive is an antithesis to a war on memory and stealing of poet fire. Archive is the tender footprint. Archive will not tread on the footprints of the most vulnerable. Deja que archivo registre los nombres de los que salen de este mundo. Albatros de Tristán, todo desaparecido, todo suicidio. Archivo, escuchen los márgenes. Archivo es una topología privilegiada. Archive exists as a map of the future beyond the exigencies of electronic media, which has transformed the relative reality of Homo sapiens sapiens. Si eres bueno para esto, memoriza por favor. Eres bueno para esto, memoriza archivo. Archivo podría ser seguro ante conflicto combinado. Gain intellectual control of the collection. Considera la expectativa de vida de la cinta. Water pipes run through storage space. Materiales están alojados 100 años en una llanura de aluvión con oscilación medioambiental. Nada de control climático. Security. Multiple keys to storage exist. Thus, space is 
not secured. Walls that leave space at ceiling height can be easily breached. Colecciones digitales en CD que están expuestos debido a fallo del disco y Archive is housed by and reanimates sentient beings. Archive is nest, is house, is reverie. Archive will hold you, and the line, I swear, comes from the breath. Archivos alborada, como alba, esta gelied, es seducción, es nemosine. Archivo está moribundo. An archive is not dying. The archivo no Who está to push the buttons to instill and install the implants of archive. A forest, Una gente lejana, a forest, un bosque, a una montaña para an escalar, un ocaso, una aranja, una tela para el cuerpo, cuerdas sólidas para rodear y transportar, dinamita con una A. Para contener tierra una A Para leer las constelaciones en el cielo Moon a fingernail above you It's a modest proposal And sometimes a wildebeest On the tundra remembers a former life And an owl has crossed your shadow At sea one day Tristan, whose name means sadness Quested the grail and drank a love potion. This Esto is a sublimated test. La prueba sublimada. A future de cultura identity. Identity. My name is John Godfrey. I'm, of course, a poet. My recent publications are The City Keeps, selected in new poems, 1966-2014. And a, a Torch for Orphans from Cuneiform Press in the cruel month of April 2020 cover art by Jen Waters. I'll begin by saying to those listening that in the 1970 US Census, the zip code 1009 was more than 90% non white. This poem is called Juicy Fruit. How many the numbers run? How long the odds noir on film the comprehensible badness? Two, three screens on the data fed base permanent numeration tag, a vessel of wits crossing the bridge. Feet wet, you bet. 
from teardrop tattoos. Neighbors, neighbors, where you gone? Substitute Urban's Miss Lawn Order, plastic Play-Doh and accordion purses, disparities eggshell, the poor and now fewish purged, foreign by stroke of NYCHA, this way to Division Street. Both sides calibrated, frosty smiles, courtesy cling wrapped. What's wrong with that elder's wheelie rucksack starch load? A1C, huh? You can tell by juicy fruit breath behind the mask. What's wrong with a spiral shell in rainy gutter, busted hottle in gun hand? Call wet trees sparsely feathered, call a rat rat in niche where two buildings never touch. And a poem aroused by the recent death of my longtime friend, Louis Walsh, poet, novelist, teacher, husband, father, grandfather, and loved by many people. Had enough. Been a long way to go for this of all nights. Grief wrapped salvos raised to the sky. Smoky candle day to day. Fleet foot reaper feeds the spark. Unhappiness in record time. I know the dance. It's our lore. No appeasement by shadow puppets. Satyavati and Vyasa uncertainty and quandary underneath hairy armor. The might of a tumor apropos to mongers their hate of love. Let them not know my fondnesses, lest they hate others to death. Dead is dead, a disease of anomalous mutation. It's sureness on the day it decides I've had enough friends. They come close, then they return to matter. They are speechless from now on. They don't watch. Happy New Year and don't count on nothing. practice for my birthday. I grew and all around me were trees. A small cut of wood I couldn't enter though I tried. As a child during a thunderstorm while I was getting my hair braided, I watched the oak out front struck down by a bolt of lightning. The jolt of bark cracking split through the house. The braid snatched tighter against me and the table shook. It was a fantastic sight. The fire that sat, that sat in the hall left over, glowing steady for one whole night. I got older. I remembered a lot. Still remember a lot. Everything began to make more sense. Less too as the glass dome fell, reflecting off the distant moving of the blurry other side. Only now do I realize what I'm chasing. The thrill of the last time something fell out of the sky. Up until that point, I was having fun in my own way. I was practicing my handwriting. I was making myself useful to myself as one must, and then what?
Fontenelle. It is courtesy of the bantering in the schoolhouse next to which I live that she dies and I want to do this. It is night, the school, the Fontenelle, rolled up in a deep bow and onto the shelf, the pen, from her to her to him and from him to her, who sleep in a valley like like a gull gull. and the pen rests in its peak. The students are gossiping and tree-hugging it, the pen in their sleep that moves in their sleep that I dare not touch. It is ponderous, their school word, fontanelle, and growing rounder as it rolls to and fro their hands across the table. Children, they who take a deep bow, huh, and long before they are finished, they begin. I must not waste the will of God, they cry, their heads plunged whole into the fontanelle, not until we've reached our teacher in her sleep's dark bottom and walked on our hands before our walls, the bird, the cloud, like portraits hung on every side. On the doleful floor whose earth gives way, so easily to waters, we often mistake the stair for a ripple, purple. It seems to make the very ground we awkwardly are in a jig with out to be our mockery. And then it seems we have hands stood so low as to be rising, and further down our hands and graves feel the silk hall pass of the earth and the slippers of the worm. And though we could not see us move like our teacher moves, it was later written that we had stood long before our portraits, that our feet were moving joyfully, juggling the chins of clouds, though our faces were weeping, pining for our teacher and the old tree with hands behind its back, tied with mourning doves that are, so to speak, resting there, ripely balancing for all time and mourning what has been done to them, what clouds have written out in nasty font, their double chins in flames. It is then the center of the table opens up round with our tears, tears that softly cloth the table, then our chests open for the laughing gull or the mourning doves with the pen eyes white-stitched, diving to dip us in our wells.